Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. Today, inside of Fusion, we're gonna look at constraints. And what are constraints? Now, that's what you're gonna find out today and how to use them. This is one of the most powerful tools inside of Fusion that in many other programs isn't really there like that. So today I'm gonna show you how to properly use them and how to use them to your advantage. So here we have this palette that's always here when you're in the sketching environment. And you can see all these symbols down here. We're not gonna bother about the ones on top here, but just down here under constraints. So these little symbols are the same symbols that you see when you go hover over certain things and they tell you basically how the certain things are fixed into place. Now the way you use this is just you click on them to choose it and then you click on whatever you want to activate and like constrain. So I'm just gonna run down and like tell you how the different ones work but I'm not gonna go in order as it's easier to explain if you go a bit of out of order. So one of the easiest to understand is horizontal vertical. This basically means that when you constrain a line with that, the line either has to be horizontal or vertical. It can't be on an angle. So let's click on this line. And as you can see, it just went vertical. Now, all the other stuff moved around and that's because it's not constrained in any way. So it can move completely freely. So let's constrain some more. Let's make this horizontal or vertical as well. And why don't we make this one and this one as well. This gives us some nice constrained lines here that are nicely horizontal and vertical. Now you can see that they all have this symbol here. And whenever you see that symbol, that means that this line is horizontal or vertical and it can't be changed. Also, this line already turned black and that's because this point is the origin point, so it's fixed and it's parallel or vertical, so it can only change in length. So let's look at something similar to horizontal vertical and that's parallel and perpendicular. Let's look at parallel first. That's basically just to say that two lines, they have to be parallel. So if I'm gonna use this one, that's horizontal, that's vertical, and this one as well, this one's gonna go vertical as well. But you can see that doesn't have the vertical constraint, but it has these two lines that go through both, both of the lines. And that means that they are parallel to each other. And perpendicular is basically the opposite to parallel, it means that they're at a right angle. So if I choose these two lines and say perpendicular, it's gonna go into a nice rectangle because this has to be a 90 degree angle. So this one is technically also horizontal fixed, but it's not constrained that way. That's why the symbol isn't showing up. And to, to get rid of those, you can either click on them again or just press escape. I already went over the fix unfix lock here in one of my previous tutorials and it's basically just to lock a line or point or even surface into particular place. So when I click that, it's gonna turn green and that means it can't be moved or changed in length or anything. It's just locked in place. And that's very handy to use if you wanna constrain one of the other lines but you don't want this line to move, but like it's not constrained yet but you just want it to stay in that place. So you can just lock a single line or point and then constrain the other ones and it will go all around them and not have them move. Now, to show you some of the others, I'm gonna have to make a, little, a few more lines. I'm gonna make a line just like that. And you can see that there's a tiny little blue mark in the corner up there. And that means basically that this is gonna be right angle and that's gonna automatically put a perpendicular constraint under. So we created this line and it's movable like that. So what I'm gonna do here is use the midpoint to say that this point here has to be on the midpoint of this line. And as you can see, this line wasn't fixed in any way. So it just moved the line instead of the, this line. And 
I don't I haven't found any way to predict what's gonna move so if you care about what is gonna move you have to lock that specific thing in place um, this also gives us an opportunity to use the symmetry tool I'm gonna use this line and this line across this axis and this is gonna basically make those symmetric but not like fully it works better if you have like more complicated shapes but as you can see they're all now parallel and basically a mirror but they aren't defined in length yet so let's use the equal to change that i'm gonna make this one equal to this one and now they're also equal in length the equal sign and the parallel sign looks pretty similar so you maybe have to be a bit careful if you want to distinguish those another one that is up here is collinear and that means that when two lines are like that, they're already parallel, but they are offset from each other. And collinear means that they get moved onto the same line. So let's unfix this line here. So we can make it collinear with this one here. So now these two lines are collinear. And we can also use the coincident button to like make these two points go onto the same point and be coincident. Now you can see that they match in this point. And to show the final ones here, I'm gonna create a circle here. Uh, let's just create a second one. And then we can use concentric to put these two circles into the same place. And then let's use the tangent, which is gonna move the circle onto the line. And the last one that I haven't covered is curvature and we can't cover that right now in this one as we're gonna need splines for that. And that's what the next video is gonna be about. So, so thanks for watching this one. Like, comment and subscribe down below and I'm gonna see you in the next one.